Sigvald and Malice actually start quite close to each other on the campaign map today. They're going to be facing off in a land battle. I'm taking Sigvald again, at Slanesh, of course, <laughs> against Malice Darkblight. So we're going to have a big vanguard action in the forest immediately. Let's take a look at the builds. Then got a couple of Dark Riders with shields backed up by Cold One Knights and Slanesh's Harvesters, Sorcerers of Fire, and Malice Darkblade's strong cavalry force here in the woods to try and counteract. What I've got, they've got a Dark Riders with repeater crossbows. Uh, looks like Blades of the Blood Queen here, Sisters of Singing Doom, a couple of Blackheart Corsairs, three Dread Spears up front, and that's pretty much it for myself. Sigvald leading the way. We've got some devoted Marauders of Slanesh, Spears, and Anti Infantry. Uh, yeah, two Spears, three Anti Infantry, along with the Bringers of Begalment, Red and Renowned Demonets. Hellscourge up front. Hellscourges have been reworked, they're now much more defensive. Um, they've got Charge Reflection, Charge Defense versus All, which could be quite nice in some situations. Uh, Dolores, of course, up on the Chariot uh, with Lore of Slanesh, Acquiescence, and Lash of Slanesh. And then my own force here in the woods. Got some Furies, a couple of Hell Striders, and a couple of Seekers. So although it is quite shadowy here in the forest, the lighting on this map, we're going to put it in a cinematic cam as we get this engagement underway. The Hell Striders... Heart and the, the Seekers all getting in here. It's all very purple and pink and confusing. But uh, some piercing bolts of burning going to be dropped from the Firecaster. This, the Soul Stealer of the Slaneshus Harvesters also. Word of Pain likewise on the uh, Seekers there, I think. Nope, looks like, yeah, on this other Seeker here. Word of Pain, Demon's Curse also dropped from Malice. So all the support abilities and the magic for, does mean that uh, Dark Elves are actually able to surprisingly pretty decisively win this cavalry engagement initially. That being said, in the front line, we're getting things underway. Corsairs also cut through Slanesh Marauder Spears relatively efficiently. Sigvald going to be getting into the fight. Currently, Slanesh doesn't have the Mirror Guard, although we don't have access to any of the Warriors of Chaos uh, Regiments of Renown currently in our build, so I'd imagine that Slanesh probably gets the Mirror Guard eventually, but bring us a Begalman gonna get up here on the high ground and start to collapse this flank come up and around i've got two hell striders on the opposite flank in tactical reserve right now we'll bring them in in just a moment also but uh, seekers were able to kind of get away there this unit comes back and is able to catch the repeater crossbows a chariot went over to support and is now having to run away nice lash does some damage there to those spears but also, not more importantly, uh, buffs up the melee attack of all units map-wide with that sweet, blissful rapture. Plus 12 melee attack, definitely fairly significant. Bringers of Begalment basically have taken no damage. We also managed to flank wide with a couple of infantry, kind of reset the lines in the other direction. The biggest thing for me is, as long as I can keep my chariot safe, it can kill pretty much all of the Dark Elf infantry. So, to that effect, I need to prioritize killing my opponent's cavalry here. I'm going to bring the Hell Striders back from route. They're hidden in the woods. My opponent didn't chase them off, so we can get them into combat now and uh, start to see off some of these Dark Riders. Meanwhile, Sigvald is duking it out now with Malice himself. So, Sigvald, of course, had a little bit of a rework. I didn't bring the Sliver Slash, his new, I mean, his old sword with a new effect, although I did get, of course, the Auric Armor, Targon of Excess, also, nice minus five melee attack aura. He still has all of his old stuff. Perfect vigor, expert charge defense, immune to psychology, uh, 110 armor likewise. Very strong. But uh, oh man, I missed it earlier too. Unfortunately, the bringers of Begalment, I think their effect is slightly bugged. It's basically impossible to see what they're fighting because of the magical uh, sort of effect of it. But you just, you can see the health bar, and that's the important part, right? Is that the Blades of the Blood Queen get absolutely savage there. Piercing Bolts of Burning I'm able to mostly dodge due to the speed of the Regiment of Renown Demonettes. And more just uh, charging from the Allurus, marauding around, trying to find different uh, open areas. Don't get me wrong, Bringers of Begotman also took a lot of damage there, but uh, the Tactical Reserve of Hellstriders being deployed. Finish off the last of the uh, Dark Elven Cavalry. Slanesh's Harvester is getting harvested by Slanesh. Seems appropriate. And finally, Bringers of Galman, having rolled up a ton of units, can now rear charge in here. They're going to turn the Witch Elves' tools against them and drive them into an enrage. Malice here pops a lot of his stuff. He's not fully transformed into Zarkan yet. Um, but let's see. I think if I can finish off these Witch Elves, then perhaps we can help Sigvald win this fight, because currently he is losing. 
pretty surprising to me. I mean, maybe I shouldn't be that surprised, but Zarkan is much better. I will just tell you right now that Zarkan takes significantly less damage over time just from his own, you know, innate uh, self-damage. Um, and it seems like he's just overall quite a bit stronger. Unfortunately for him, this time around, he's going to hit army losses. And because of the enrage, I don't know if you saw the banner there right at the end, the enrage of the bringers of Vagalman actually prevented him from using his transform, of course, because he was out of control. So in that specific instance, you unfortunately don't get to see new buffed Zarkand because I countered him. But there you go. Um, I'm sure you'll see him in plenty of other replays. Don't, uh, don't fret yourself about that. This replay for me is really about these two units right here. Like Sigvald did a great job of holding. He kind of got beat up by Malice actually pretty hard, but did manage to hold until the end and provide a nice anchor for these power units to come in and get their work done. Even though the cavalry engagement went quite badly for me, I was able to bring these other two tactical reserves around, and even the ones that routed off were able to come back, get some pretty good value, kind of charging out some of those light cavalry. My infantry absolutely got slaughtered for the most part, but uh, one managed to do okay, 147 kills, 800 value right there. And then again, bring us up a Galment. Obviously, from uh, from Dark Elves' perspective, the, the spells they brought just weren't... Uh, like, Piercing Bolts of Burning is good, don't get me wrong. It's a little bit tricky to use against Slanesh because it has a long wind-up time. And Slanesh is very fast. It's quite easy to dodge. So, for me, like, taking... Uh, do Dark Elves even have access to Lore of Metal? Why do I feel like they do? But then when I actually think about it, I don't think they do. I'd have to double-check that, but Searing Doom would be great here. Um, if you did take Lore of Fire, just Fireball, even Burning Head, I think they might have tweaked it so it's a little bit better than it is currently in the live patch of Total War Warhammer 3. But definitely remains to be seen. Anyway, fun matchup, definitely very fun and thematic. Um, I don't really know what else to, to say here besides, uh, yeah, I mean, for the Dark Elves, Caster gets quite a bit of value. The Black Art Corsairs do okay initially, but Blades of the Blood Queen, I definitely think taking Elite Infantry against... Uh, the elite armored infantry of the Dark Elves is going to be a mistake here. Just like Scourge Runner chariots would have been great here for the anti-large damage. And the anti-infantry damage also, the impact damage, can be quite strong as long as they don't get enraged by the bringers of Beguilement. You know, just uh, the shock damage of chariots would be quite good. I'd probably actually take Flaming Sword now that I think about it. Uh, the, the damage spike is significant enough from Flaming Sword that it could help you just beat down those demon units pretty decisively. Maybe Flaming Sword and Fireball layering one after the other dark elves don't have any units with innate bound fire damage to synergize with kindle flame so it would only be boosting anytime you cast spell you know whatever is being damaged by that spell whether it be the melee buff or fireball or whatever else but uh, it's just something to think about anyway hopefully you guys enjoyed this if you like this sort of content be sure to like subscribe hit that bell notification button every time i upload a new video you'll be notified thanks again we'll see you next time